we're doing a more detailed explanation of our build of the Rob White Improved Sport Boat. We started out gluing up some cypress for the transom and then we cut out the molds using MDF that we had on hand. This is Rob's interpretation of the Grumman Aluminum Sport Boat. Following Rob's directions, we built this boat right side up to begin with. We usually build them upside down first. It was an opportunity to learn something new. We milled strips from the 16 foot 6 cypress boards and then we did the bead and cove routing on each edge. It helps when you're making the bead and coves if you strap the, the planks together so that the cove portion doesn't get the edges broke off. We started adding the strips at the shear line and since we were going to paint this boat inside and out, we decided we didn't have to worry about the drywall screw holes that we had put in the deck, in the sides to put the strips on. The good thing about strip planking a hull is, is that you can do as few or as many strips as you want at one particular time. When running the strips uh, and applying them, we let them run wild off the transom. But when we got around to doing the stem, we'd keep them short and then smooth them back so that they didn't run into each other because it's a lot narrower at that end. After a certain point, we needed to turn the hull over, so we put legs on the mold so that we could flip the boat, and we used straps in order to do that, accomplish that. And now it's inverted, ready to start doing the rest of the bottom of the boat. And slowly here, plank by plank, it's uh, starting to take shape as we work our way towards the center of the bottom. One thing we did differently on this boat, Rob believed in using super glue type glues to tack the boards together. So we gave that a shot. We didn't do it on all of them, but we did the majority of them that way. The bottom is beginning to take shape here. And it's hard to see from the photo, but from the first station forward of the transom to the transom, there's a slight rise in the transom that Rob calls a throwdown. That helps it get up on plane. Okay, and here we're affixing the outer stem to the hull. And we just backed some screws out and laced it on. We put a solid piece of wood there for the triangle so that we could not have to bevel each one of the strips at that point. And this is where all the sanding fun begins. We start leveling out everything. We use long boards, we use orbital sanders, and the hoses here help suck up some of the dust. After lots and lots of sanding and sanding and more sanding and long board sanding and orbital sanding and sanding by hand and admiring the, the hull, it begins to take a really pretty shape. This part right here, we'll eventually get around to sanding that off flush. There's a shot down the side. And after all that sanding, here we are fairing the hull a little bit with micro blooms where we fill in some strip imperfections and screw holes and anything else we could find that would need a filler. The boat really gets ugly with these micro balloons on here. Here's what they look like when we're mixing them up. Actually, this looks a little thick right now to me. But the good news is, after you get done putting all the filler on, you get to sand it again. 
after you're happy with the sanding, then you clean the hole, you wipe it down and twice, and then you dry wipe it, and then you wet wipe it a couple times. And here we've draped the fiberglass cloth over it. We've doubled the fiberglass cloth on the bottom of the hole. We've started applying the epoxy at this point. And as you go through here, you'll notice, or you may not notice, I don't know, it gets a little shinier the longer that we let it run here. <laughs> and still at this point here, we have not sanded that off totally flush, but we'll get to it eventually. At this point, the hole is just sitting on top of the molds. It is not attached to the molds in any way. So we can lift the hole up and turn it over. And then I proceed to take two dozen pictures of it just sitting there in a new position because I haven't seen it that way in a while. Because we're getting ready here to uh, sand the interior. So the next process there is sanding the interior of the hull. And we sanded and sanded and sanded some more. Still haven't sanded the back of the transom yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking fairly clean. And then we get to fill all the voids, screw holes, and areas where we need to fare out the inside of the hull. So we can sand it again. If you look real close at the top of the shear strake here, you can see that the glass has already been put in the boat and it's been epoxified, at least the first coat. So we'll put some more epoxy on it, do a little more sanding, and cut off that nasty ridge up there at the top. And when we weren't looking, some elves came in and sanded off the extending strips of the transom. And we added more epoxy, right up to the point where we decided that was enough epoxy so we could start working on the seats and the floor stiffeners. And this is our high-tech way of fitting the seats and the seat supports into the hull. And would you look at that transom. It's even epoxied on the inside and the outside. And all the boxes and clamps and everything else is out of the boat too. So that's what the hull looks like inside. Stiffening the transom for the motor mount. And now we're installing the inner rail with blocks for the open rail and then the outer rail at the shear. Stiffening the seats here uh, so we can put foam, one inch styrofoam, underneath the seats for flotation. We put a PVC hole in the transom to accommodate a drain plug. Rob recommends anywhere between 2 and 8 horsepower. This is a 6 horsepower motor. We're just trial fitting. He says it gets real scary if you're by yourself in an 8 horse. We fiberglass the seats in place after we stiffen them up and put foam underneath the seats. Beginning to paint here. 
we're uh, priming the interior of the hull with two coats of primer and then we'll do a couple coats of topside paint too. We turned the hull back over so we could install splash rails at the bow of the boat and seven foot runners forward of the transom to, the boat, to dip. step in the hull. We're starting to primer the outside of the hull now. And that doesn't take too long. And here's the first top coat on the out exterior of the hull. It is Hatteras Off-White. The only way you can tell that, because it's a little shinier than the primer was, and a little yellower color. We painted the outside, then we turned it over and painted the inside. Now we're masking the areas that we don't want to have an accent color painted onto the hull. Painting requires a lot of tedious masking, and depending on the number of colors and everything, you're going to be putting masking and stuff on and taking it off two or three times. This color is Sundown Buff, and it looks a lot better after you take the plastic and tape off of the hole. Well, we're getting closer to finishing it. Just uh, a little more paint, touch-ups, and add a little plaque here at the back. I have to put a board on there for the motor mount. And this is the chicken feed boat, just about finished. We uh, loaded on the trailer and we're going to take it out for a little splash just out to Bayport to uh, see how it handles. We borrowed this slightly too large trailer from our melon seed to take it out for the first time. And Kathy is getting ready to fend off from the dock so we can pick up our son Dan. Kathy sent in uh basically the timesheet of us building the boat to Messing About in Boats. And that little story was in there in 2013. And just for fun, we decided after a few months that we wanted to see how this thing would perform with a sail. So we took the Amas and Akas off of one of our kayaks that we had set up as a trimaran and mounted them on the chicken feed boat. And it was a pleasant sail. It wasn't any speed record, but uh, these are made up from uh, plans from Chesapeake Lightcraft. And that's a 62 square foot sail from our 13 and a half foot melon seed. We added a mast step, glued it into the bottom of the boat, uh, built a rudder, built a lee board. Placement of the Akas wasn't perfect because it uh, interfered with getting on the seats, but uh, all in all, it was a lot of fun. It's hard to have a bad day when you're out sailing on the water.